Hi, I'm Mark Rudin. Welcome back to Nomad Boat Building. And today we are going to try and take care of all the little bits and pieces of stuff that has to happen inside the cockpit area before we put the deck on. All right, here are my drawings. I took some dimensions off some existing boats to figure out based on the, the rig they're using uh, where the shrouds are running. The boats we're looking at were pretty kind of consistent in the shrouds coming inboard about four inches uh, from the shear. If I plot out that dimension from the spreaders or the hounds, it seems to bring the shrouds right down pretty much smack dab at the water line, um, at the load water line. So we're kind of going based on that. So what I want to do is I want to create some blocking that sort of fills in this gap here um, between the side of the hull and the water line and falling in line with those shrouds because we're going to fasten the shrouds to the side of that blocking is the plan. So the next challenge is the console or the, the control shelf. We know we're going to have some sort of control levers up here for the rudder foot control. So stick the foot somewhere around there and uh, I can see my line for my um, dead wood is right about here and we'll put a seat in there so we'll just give it about an inch or something like that for that seat. So with that in mind now I'm thinking about you know what's a comfortable position to be reaching forward to control stuff and it seems to be right along here you know we want it uh, low enough that it's easy to reach forward and grab the lines you want we want it high enough that the legs clear it we don't want it too high I don't think because um, I think that would be, might be awkward, but um, before I glue things in, we'll have to have a talk about whether or not I picked the right height here, but it seems like about 100 millimeters up from the load water line seems to be pretty good. I suppose you could go higher. That might not be a terrible thing. But if we really wanted to go higher, I could always add some more blocking in higher or, or rate, create a, a riser block on top of this this shelf. So for the most part we're worried about bringing the shrouds down. And so I'm going to make my blocking about 100 millimeters high right along this area. So if you think about leaning forward, grabbing a line and pulling it taut and snapping it through a jam cleat, that feels pretty good. If it's too high that means you gotta, you gotta jerk it up too high to sort of control it. I like the idea of grabbing it down lower, bringing it up to a convenient height and then having a little more downward pressure um, having enough downward pressure to push it into place. All right, I've made up these blocks that are gonna be uh, carrying our shrouds. And the idea is to spread the load over the hull down here. And so the idea here is we'll fit these in here and we'll chop away everything that we don't need, uh, leaving a nice little block that the shrouds can fasten onto. It'll be glued into the hull. And I might even add a layer of G10 onto it just so there's maximum holding potential for fasteners. So uh, you get a nice layer of fiberglass that the fastener has to pass through in order to hang on. So I've set up my dividers, basically taking into the, the gap here. And I'm just gonna carefully hold this in position. And then mark it there. I'll mark it on the other side too, just so that I've, so that it's consistent. But I'm really just gonna work from one side. I could mark it from the top and bottom if I want to. Mark it on one end there on the bottom. It's, it's so hard to see that it's not a lot of point. But there we go. So we've got a nice little line to follow there. 
So we'll rip that off on the bandsaw and clean it up on the belt sander. And then I'm going to have to come back here and do a little bit of playing around because there's some shape to it this way as well. Not a lot. I mean, if I lay my straight edge on there, it is like the smallest amount. It's like a, like a 32nd of an inch or something like that of shape this way. Even if I put my straight edge on here, it's almost dead flat. So um, there's very little to take off. Even if I did nothing to take it off, I would just end up with a little hollow that would fill in epoxy, and that would be fine too. So I'm using uh, our sanding board here to give ourselves something to fasten a guide to and I've taken this stick and I've tried to come up with a line that represents the run of the shroud so that they sit inboard about four inches. It seems like those shrouds land right about at the waterline. And so with that in mind, I'm, I've projected the waterline to the inside of the boat here, the load waterline, and now I've got my blocking. And what I need to do is get a line on it. So I've established that I want it sitting just about here. I'm just going to trace along that line right there. So I'm going to trim off this blocking and I'm going to actually trim the top down a little bit too. So in conjunction to this blocking carrying the shrouds, we actually have another bit of blocking that's going to sit here. And this is going to carry what we call, we're calling the, um, the console, which is basically, basically like a, a, th a thwart that's going to have a whole bunch of little jam cleats on it and things like that. And one of the things that the owner wants to do is he wants to put a turning block onto this guy and have it come across onto this guy with a little um, tension release lever. So that's what I'm working on now is figuring out all the little bits and pieces I need to connect the dots for that sort of thing. So we'll trim this down uh, to this angle and we'll also reduce the mass of it and then we'll fit this to it and I'll probably need another little wedge added on that my, our cleat is going to uh, fasten onto. All right, I've applied a layer of unidirectional tape down through here. It's going to act kind of like a kind of like a knee, if you will, or a frame. The idea is to reinforce this whole area between the shrouds and the mast step. And I've used peel ply. This is my first time playing around with this stuff. satisfying. It helped to certainly fill but make sure the weave is fully filled. I was hoping it would bleed out the edge of the tape here a bit better. Hmm. I have to decide how I want to deal with that. I've got little, little air pockets here where the tape edge ended. I hadn't considered that when I was using it. I wasn't sure what it was going to do, if that was going to feather that out for me or not. All right, I've got my shroud block here and I've figured out a way to sort of tack it in place. Of course, it's not glued in yet, but I'll be using this method when I do do the glue up. This is something that if you've got like a really awkward thing to clamp, um, it's really a good idea to try and figure out how you're going to do that ahead of time. And so beauty about using epoxies is that they don't need any clamping pressure for them to achieve full strength. Glues like resorcinol need a very specific clamping pressure, um, whereas epoxy doesn't. And that's one of the really nice things about epoxy. I've got this blocking that's going to sit in here that's going to carry our console. And so I need to just mark 
its position. And so what I've done is I've figured out a relative height that I want it. I just use this little scrap of cardboard here. And I'm just going to mark it at both ends. And that is all I need, really. I'm going to trace around it so I know where to put my adhesive, probably. Well, I don't really have to. I can put the adhesive on the back of the block. That wouldn't be a terrible idea, actually. And then I can just position it. Um, but you notice I've sanded out all the way around where it's going to lie. In fact, it looks like I kind of was a little shy down here. We want to rough up that epoxy, make sure it's got some tooth. And then, of course, the back of it, if it's if you got a plain smooth, you know, we want to hit that with some abrasives as well. Uh, or pre-coat it with epoxy is another way, you to, way to go, and I've done that with the backs of the shroud blocks. These are less critical, and there's a lot of gluing area here. So that'll go in there nicely. And now I've got to figure out how I'm going to clamp that, and uh, it'll pretty much be the same thing. So I think I'll try using a tape hinge down here. Although this is kind of this is this is it comes to a feather edge, so tape hinge works well here. It doesn't, so that's a bit problematic. Not sure what to do. Maybe I'll maybe I can actually tack a a batten down here, a piece of door skin that's going to carry the lower edge. I think that might be worth trying. I'm just going to give myself a, a mark showing the underside of this. There we go. And now I'll just grab some scraps and I'll play around with a couple ideas. All right, I cut some door skin. Of course, my first guess was too long. My second guess came up too short. So it looks like if I can use just a little shim of door skin underneath this. Touch it up just so. I think it's gonna work. So we'll just use a little finishing nail in here. Don't be afraid to use finishing nails when it comes to just trying to get things to work in boat building. I mean, it's a small hole. You can make it disappear pretty easily. And um, it can really save you a lot of grief just by accepting the fact you could have a pinhole here and there with a little bit of stuff in it. There's no shame in that. Okay, that looks good. That lands pretty much where I need it to. Can I tweak it up a little? I'm going to use tape across the top as well, so we'll get some tape on here and make sure that's going to work. Okay, and remember, make yourself some tabs. Some tabs on the ends can make life a whole lot easier down the road. Got one around the top here. This end, I'm making these pieces of tape a little on the short side. Luckily, these are the trial run. I'll make some other ones for the finished product. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, the, the danger, of course, is that. That's when you grab things from the top face like that, it wants to tip out, and that's what I'm trying to avoid. Now, the one thing I can't really do is pop nails into this hole here very easily at this point because it, it's so thin, right? It's just, it's, it's a quarter of an inch thick. I think that'll work if I can just prop that up a hair. Now, of course, this will get glued in, glued on if I'm not careful, so I think what I'll have to do is I'll wrap that in tape so that it can't get glued in place. Uh, hopefully that'll stay. I might have to, I might actually even add a little tab onto the surface here so it pushes against the But all in all, that looks really good. That's going to work out well. And uh, there's one more thing I want to do while it's set up here, is I need to make a little wedge to carry a little piece of hardware that we have. And so now that this is set up, I can 
figure that out. And I'll just start by taking a, uh, a bevel off of here. Like so. Looks good. And you know what I can also do is I can actually mark where my surface is. So I've got a height I can reference as well. This is where like trying to keep yourself from getting covered in glue and everything else covered in glue is really difficult. So I'm trying my best, but things could go sideways. Okay. So I've got the back of this gooped up. And I've got a lines drawn on my hull here to follow. And I think I need to go there. Of course, all the little alignment lines I've drawn are now covered in epoxy and stuff, so impossible to see. <clears throat> Come on. I made epoxy on this side just a hair too soft for really holding this in place as well as it could. And if you make it very peanut buttery, it's a good chance it'll just stay put. But that's what the tape's for. Okay, so that looks pretty good. The joint looks pretty cleaned up. I mean, you want to try and get this like perfect, but man, there's so many little tiny things that prevent you from getting perfect on your first shot. Okay, there's that. Now, if this floats just a hair, it's not a big deal so long as there's a proper bed of epoxy underneath it. Now we can get this next bit of blocking in. And you know the difficult part is how many of your tools you end up just getting absolutely all but one corner covered in epoxy and it gets really hard to handle them. Okay, so I got all that covered. Now I just want to make sure that I've got my fitting surfaces on this guy covered, and there's a little bit of a gap right down the middle, which I want to fill. I just want to make sure I have the edges of this addressed mostly. I mean the middle has got stuff all over it but what you don't want to do is you push it into place and then just find that you get the edges are are shy of epoxy. Okay I think that's gonna work out okay so let's give it a try and fingers crossed and all that good stuff. Trying to stay clean. Trying to stay clean. Okay. So that's looking good. 
little bit in there. Trying to form a little tiny fillet underneath here just to finish that off. I find this particular paint knife here to be really nice for cleaning up epoxy. It's just got the exact right bit of flexibility to it. Not too flexible. I've got some that are like super thin and floppy and I, I don't find them useful at all for cleaning up epoxy. And I've got some that are just a bit too stiff. And likewise, they just don't conform to the shape so they're pushing pieces around. I think that looks good. Just going to add a piece here to help just pin it down. I don't know what happened, it just happened there. I just lost contact between these two. Come on, stay. Stress making. Back to the other side, I got one more block to put in and then I'm done. And you squeeze it on the bottom so that tells me I should probably think about trying to make sure there's something in there just in case I got a gap. I'm gonna get this out of the way as soon as I put my tape on top in place. General rules to scrape up before you tool down. Meaning using a using a forward motion with my tool in order to get rid of excess material before I use a dragging motion to uh, clean up that joint. Of course, if you want a very clean joint, you don't use a dragging motion at all, you just tool it up and get out of there. But, I just, I don't mind the idea of a little tiny fillet in these joints. Just a little a little dab of alcohol here and there to clean up some of these more egregious fingerprints. One thing I just did wrong was at the surface of the alcohol right before trying to put some tape on it. Just give that a moment to dry off before I finish this off. This 
out of there now. Now I'm just going to tool on because I want a little fillet in there, which means I just pushed all my excess around, but that's okay because this is easy to clean up here. All right. And just in case these want to drift apart again, I'll just tack these together too. Now the trickiest part is to walk away without touching it ever, but I can never do that. So some tiny little thing I want to mess with, and that is usually my undoing. Let's try and be smart today. It goes against my nature. But I'm going to try it anyway. Okay, done. Okay, I've got my pattern here that I used for creating my dead wood. And um, so what I want to do is use it to sort of figure out the shape of my blocking here. This is going to be my mass step. And uh, I've got my overall length that I want. I've given a little heel cut uh, just to give it a bit of an angle. It's just a little less than plumb just for looks. And um, so I need to bevel off the whole shape of it. I just want to bring it so that it's level and uh, there's no s specific reason to do that other than it's just sort of uh, makes it easier to figure out what you're doing with the masting and rigging and stuff like that. And so I want to bring this off level and I'm going to use this pattern to figure out what that is. And in a nutshell I basically have, the, this is a level right here. If I follow this line, if that's my horizontal plane, swing that out, a little pressure on this block, so it zeroes out, and right about there, that's probably okay. okay I'll use my little my ruler here like an offset, so check this out, I can flip one leg out of the way, and just slide this along until I'm touching my starting point right there. Come on. There we go. Put some pressure on it. And I can swing that out of the way. And that's the line I want to cut right there. There we go. There's step one. Okay, I don't need quite as much mass here. So let's figure out that part. So I'm just going to draw. There's the top of my locking. And I think we're going to be working with a piece of aluminum angle or channel iron that's uh, like an inch wide or seven eighths. Let me give it a little more meat. I'm going to say an inch and a half. So center okay, 
there's an inch and a half. So I'm going to give this just a little shoulder. That looks pretty good. All right, I'll set the table saw up to cut that. Now that angle's not accurate. I need to bring it down. Pick it up off of this end. I don't know what that angle is. I don't care what that angle is. I just want to cut that angle. So here's a really simple, curious little trick. You cut your double-sided tape into parallelograms like that. It's just easier to peel the backing off when you've got that little sharp corner. It's like it's surprisingly <laughs> easier. It's such a stupid little difference compared to cutting it square, but it makes a huge difference. Having fumbled with it, cut square hundreds of times, I can tell you it's worth the time. That little, well, it takes no time, it takes no extra time. Okay, there we go. So this is I'm cutting, cutting along that line, and this one is offset to uh, give me a square edge on the bandsaw. One more little operation. Okay, that's going to sit in here like this, right there. Which is good. But we've got one little spot that needs to change. That is, takes a turn right there. Just a slight. Back to the bandsaw to trim that off. Make sure I got a line to follow.
There is just no good way to hold something like this, I tell you. I really need a proper pattern maker's vise, but that kind of thing is pretty hard to come by, at least around these parts. So there we go, there's our mast step. Now I know there's nothing on there to hold the mast, but we're gonna have an aluminum track on there. So this is really just a piece of blocking that we can fasten into easily. Uh, yellow cedar, uh, it's not the hardest thing, but the aluminum is taking the brunt of the abuse. This is really spreading the load and giving us material that you know things fasten into well without it being uh, overly hard. There's no can be very little worry about splitting this if you use an oversized fastener compared to a piece of hardwood for instance. And um, we've given it a knife mark for a center line here just to make it easy to find down the road after paint varnishes on there, a little more slightly than a pencil line. There we go. Job done. I just gotta glue it in. Here we go. Nice things about quick grips is their ability to sort of hang on to slightly precarious situations and apply pressure in directions that you want. It doesn't always work, but sometimes you luck out. And that's in. All right, that's it for today, folks. Thank you so much for watching, and I especially want to thank everybody who helps support these videos over on Patreon. If you'd like to be one of those people, please consider joining us by following the link in the corner or down in the description. Now, until next time, get out there, get your hands dirty, and I will see you later.